is that me at the end? No, That's just what you want. Why do I get a cuddle? That's nice. Oh. Okay. Just random cuddle. A double drop stitch. What's that? That's where I dropped two stitches, but I picked them both back up again. Oh, wow. And then the other thing is, I do love the yarn. And, and again, I'll talk about this. Did you hear me physically no. suck inwards? <laughs> Let me just pull out my bits and bobs. Oh. Well, no, we don't even want to talk about Outlander. We've been there, we've done that. No, She's Outlander hooked. this week. Stop. I swore I wasn't going to watch it again. Just. So if we vote, it goes onto the bucket list. If we veto, it's gone, baby. And I said to you, this looks really interesting. Shall we watch it? You and I don't want to watch a film about McDonald's. Excellent. So tape it big at the top, tiny at the bottom. Yeah. Silly. <laughs> it's silly. It looks silly you here. look silly and they feel yeah. silly. Everyone to episode 85. That was so much better. Of the bakery best. Oh, I cut in and then I ruined it. You did. I'm you so did sorry. I just was excited because I was so much nicer than me. Oh. I loved it. Welcome. Yes. Oh. Had a bit of a morning. We have. I need to sit down. <laughs> I don't Look. know. He gets himself into these things. I really don't. And what I want all of you to know is, I put the phone down on millions of people to come and record this podcast. We did. I did think it was a bit strange. <laughs> Look, they, I'd said all I needed to say. True. So, mm. just being on national radio, talking about knitting, that's insane, isn't it? You have done this before. No, no, no. Before it was about being ginger. Oh, was and it? And I, I tried to shoehorn in the knitting. Right. And it all went a bit weird. Right. So that the knitting didn't really get much right. of a... This time, the knitting was the star. What? It was a phone it's in. There's a phone in on Radio Five in uh, the UK, and it was about mindfulness. And I was just on my way home, get, getting ready to film the podcast, and I heard that they were going to do this, and I just thought, oh, I'm going to ring in. Well, they've got to talk about knitting. Well, do knitting. you think I would have done that? No. I text. And, and, uh, Are you texting? Yeah, that's what you do. You text, oh, right. and then they phone up the people who they want to get on the oh, show. Right. And I knew as soon as I went. I'm a 42-year-old male who was taught knitting by his wife and I started because I had a car accident and I've had cancer. As soon as you say those words, you know they're going to put you on the radio. Yeah, yeah, but what I wanted to do was I really wanted to just get on the radio and do what we've spoken about so often and that is talk about how cool knitting is mm. and how it's not something which just your granny can do. It's something we all can do. Which we all know that, don't we? But there's still a lot of people that don't know that. So, so I just had the opportunity to say that to millions of people. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, you. And did it do okay? It was good. I, I was just so. sat here knitting and like giving my head down not to do, not to make him laugh or anything. It's awful. It's very it's, good. Oh, it's so tough. And he was talking to Nikki Campbell. I love Nikki Campbell. And he spoke, that was who he spoke to before, yeah, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's very good. It's yeah. very good. Yeah. So what an exciting start to the day. Mm. But this is more exciting. And that's why I put the phone nail on them. And I have to thank everybody for their lovely birthday wishes. Oh, yeah, you had a lovely birthday, did you? Genuinely. I'm presuming you did. No, did you I have told a lovely you, birthday? I told you both. Say, he did say he'd had a lovely and birthday. And I'm going to do it publicly here again. If you told me a minute ago, I would have done so on national radio. I would have said, what a wonderful birthday I had. Genuinely, yeah. it's the best birthday really? I can recall having. Gosh. Ever. Why? Because it was great, all of it. Oh. You got some nice things and we had a nice trip out and Well, I think we had the most delicious burger you have most, ever had. That makes me think what it is. And the burger place we went to, you can have it bunless. A bunless burger. We realised that this time. So but best so of all. I had it bunless and when you have it without the burger bun you get to replace it with something. They they replace it with coleslaw and corn, what did corn, I corn. Oh, corn on the cob. Yes. Fantastic. The coleslaw was homemade and it wasn't, Patronymous. it didn't have like um, loads of mayonnaise in it or anything. It was like in a, more like a sort of dressing than than the heavy mayonnaise. And it was absolutely delicious. Yeah, it, seriously. It, it, it's the best I, burger we have ever had. And yes. You've never seen Bryony eat a burger so quick in your entire life. And she's never been a burger person. No. It, it's, it's, called, it's called the Gourmet Burger Kitchen. And it is a franchise. 
And I'm not necessarily a lover of franchises, no, to, to be honest. I didn't realise it was a franchise, but yeah. there's, there's one in York, and that's where we went to, first of all. Yeah. And then this one we went to is in the Metro Centre. But what they do, which is brilliant, because it's rare, even in a pub when you might have a burger. Yeah. It's rare you go somewhere where they cook a burger properly. Yeah. And also it's rare that you get a burger that's not full of spices. Yeah, and yes, that's true. And it's also, you know, it's fresh. You can tell they're not frozen. Yeah. It's and it, fresh, it's just, you know, fantastic. I tell you what was interesting. Proper meat in it. You can, you know, you know what burgers are like. But it just really lovely. I started watching a film last night when I was doing the dishes on Amazon. It's on Amazon Prime, so I'm sure there'll be lots of you who can get this. Some of you might have seen it already. Talk to me about Amazon Prime. Well, no, we don't even want to talk about Outlander. We've been there, we've done that. No She's Outlander hooked. this week. Stop I it. swore I wasn't going to watch it again. Just... So I started watching this film called The Founder and it's about how McDonald's started and it's oh, really interesting. Right. Don't go ah oh, like that because no, that I showed you... I'm interested ah. Oh. But I showed you this film right. about six months ago. I don't remember. And I said to you, this looks really interesting. Shall we watch it? And you went, I don't want to watch a film about McDonald's. I'm sure I didn't say that. You did. I'm sure he's making Because I really up. want... This is not true. I don't so you want to that. watch it? Well, well, we'll watch it then. I'll watch pretty much anything unless it's scary. Look, if, but I don't want to watch it if you don't want to watch no, it. No, I'll, I'll watch Have you watched a lot of it? No. Well, I'll watch it. Okay, then. Well, there we go. I'm so interested. started watching this film. And I think the problem with franchises or certain franchises is they've lost the core values. They've lost that. I'm sure when McDonald's started, unless this film is all lies... The focus was on making a really good quality burger. Right, wow. Because it isn't now, let me tell you. What? So, what were we doing on our shopping trip? Well. Oh, we went to Super Dry. Dan really likes Super Dry. Well, no, no, no. I wanted a jacket. And I've seen jacket. some nice jackets. And I tried this one on and I looked like an idiot, didn't I? Yeah, I did. It was really funny. <laughs> it had like a belt on it. I looked like a, 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 a camp explorer. Yes. Yes. That's a good description. <laughs> Yeah. Even I knew. Um, so I tried these jackets on. I was so disappointed because mm. I really wanted, I just, I've got this picture on my mind and I was like, oh, this is a disaster. Yeah. But then we saw but this then, other one. And it's absolutely lovely. We I am Jack Bauer. It's in the style of a denim jacket, but the fabric's not quite like traditional denim. What it's I got lovely. though. Lovely. It looks lovely in it, everyone. Ooh. What I got though was these tops mm. and these tops are amazing because they're really, yeah. they're really good on my scar. Yeah. I found actually, I have itchy problems with my scar. It's it's the tops I wear. Yeah. And this top, it's lovely. It's very, very soft. Yeah. Uh, so we've got a couple of these, didn't we, for I love you? it. And a jacket. Because yeah, everything's been irritating your scar, which is yeah. still very... Brazed. Yeah, it really is, yeah. yeah. And it got me thinking about fashion. Because we found out about a fashion the other day. Did we? That was a little bit surprising. Mm -hmm. You know, when you were growing up, you know, there's fashions, wasn't there, that you followed and, and then your parents would look and they would go, oh, oh that's crazy, wouldn't you? Oh, gosh, all, all I these, know what he's going to talk these, about. Well, I've been doing some research. Oh, you haven't. And, ladies and gentlemen, the things we're going to talk about right now, you're not going to believe us. So I've put the link in the show notes below so you can go check and you can see that we're not fibbing. So the first thing, it's uh, nose hair extensions. That's oh. what the fashion's called. <laughs> We've seen pictures. You can go look too. This is the most this is ridiculous a thing you've ever seen in your Did you ever life. Think you might like to extend your nose hairs. What? And this was women. It's insane. But Kay, that's not all. Ponytail eyebrows. What? People are putting extensions onto their eyebrows. And making ponytails. And making ponytails oh, that get hang on. down. These people have got nothing better to do. And uh, two more, which are, you know, slightly less extreme. There's feather eyebrows, where they make your eyebrows look like a feather. And there's also barbed wire brows, where they make your eyebrows look like barbed wire. It's the, it's the, the, the extensions, though. That I thought you were going to talk about slippers. Which slippers? The shoe slippers. Oh, uh, well, you can talk about those. They're silly. What are they called? I can't remember. I did find out what they were called, but we've been seeing the... We saw one girl come out of school the other day when we were waiting for Bryony. And she was a sixth former, so she wasn't in uniform. And she got on what looked like a pair of slippers. I said to Dan, why has that girl got slippers on? And it was like this sort of flip-flop style that's got a bar across, and it had fur on. Do you know, like, sort of 70s? 
slippers, you know, that you your mum used to yeah, wear. Yeah, she really did. They were like that. And I was watching this girl like this and I said, did she forget to put her shoes on? I was totally perplexed. Anyway, we've been seeing these girls about that age, you know, probably 17-ish, wearing these things that just look like slippers. So we found out that they're an actual thing. It's a shoe that looks like a slipper. It's what is just, that fashion all about? It's just crazy. But we are now sounding like our parents would have sounded like... I suppose like it means that when you we were. don't have to change your shoes in the... You know, have to put shoes on in the morning. You just put your slipper shoes on and you wonder though, you go. You wonder though, don't you? You know, you always talk about how fashions will go full circle because there's only so much you can do. Well, actually, they've just developed a whole load of new stuff because no one would have thought that fashions would be no. doing crazy things with your face. I tried on a pair of trousers... That oh, were the craziest gosh. things I've ever put on in my life, right? They looked fine. All the measurements, fine. They were like cargoes, were Yes, they? yeah. And they, they were, thir- was it 36? 30, 36 long, which yeah, is what we 36 normally get long, you. Which, so put them, I, I pulled them on and I couldn't get them over my calves. The, the top bits would go, the leg bits would go, but the bottom bits, I'm like heaving these they things like... on. So then I pulled them up and it was a 36 and there was so much room I'm thinking, this can't be a 36, because yeah. I'm only just a 36. And then, of course, we looked on the on the tag, and all the fashion is tapered, isn't it? Tapered, well... the, the... So tapered, big at the top, tiny at the bottom. Yeah. Silly. <laughs> it's well, silly. It looks silly on you. You look silly, and they feel silly. <laughs> so it's can't silly. Can't be comfortable, can it, really? No. Fashions do my head in. Yeah. And we were chatting, weren't we, about relaxing knits? We were on the last um, on the pop that we did yeah, on, on yeah, Sunday. We were, we were. And you've come to the conclusion, uh, haven't you, that this is your relaxing hit? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I spoke about my bits and bobs, which I'll talk about again in a minute. And you know, we were saying I'd love to find something else that I found as relaxing as that. You know, just something different. And we were just talking to our patrons about what they found relaxing and and how they go about finding and how they patterns. go about finding things and it's a very difficult thing i just don't think you really know because everybody's different and everybody finds different things relaxing and you know how you can't there's not really a search function is there to search for relaxing knits not as far as i'm aware because it's so subjective it's incredibly subjective isn't it you just couldn't do that so yeah you'd think though that out in the world there must be something out there where people have spoken of it similarly to the bits and bobs yeah. when they've used the word zen knit. So many people yeah. have said that. Clearly, that is a zen yeah, knit. Yeah, which is fantastic because that's how I find it and it's nice to know that other people... We'd like to find more zen knits, please. We would like more zen knits because I think that's where my head is right now. I don't really want complicated at the moment. I just want beautiful, relaxing knits. So. I think, if I'm honest, I think that's what you've always wanted. Well, it's true, because I you've do. you've always but... loved knitting mitered squares. That's true. You've always loved knitting vanilla socks. True. So that's just what you Why want. Why do I get a cuddle? That's nice. Oh, well, there we go. Just then. random cuddle. Hashtag. <laughs> Hashtag random, random cuddle. cuddle. Nice. Yeah. This is a very, very special episode because, again, we're ringing out the old and we're bringing in the new. We are. Because today we begin our great quest. Oh, for the Bakery Bears bucket list. Oh, I'm so excited to tell you what mine is. Yeah, are you? Genuinely? No, I am. Oh, what do you mean, no, I am? Yes, I am. Yes, Sorry. I'm very excited. Yeah, I, yes, I am. Yeah. Why did I say no, I, I am? I don't know. I don't know. That's great. I am also really, really excited. And this is something I would encourage everyone to do because life is too short, isn't it? You know, sit down, talk to your significant other or others and sort out what is on your bucket list. Yeah. And that is exactly what we're going to do with you. It gives you something to aim for, doesn't yeah. it? Even if it's five years down the line, ten years down the line, you know, you've still got that thing to look forward to. And what we're going to do is, over the next few episodes, culminating at the end of January, we're going to be proposing our possible um, things for mm-hmm. the Baker Bears bucket list. Once we have formulated that bucket list, the end of January we'll have a special gala episode where we a will... Gala a episode. gala episode? Do you have to, like, dress up? I think we should. <laughs> Where, where we shall pick the activity which we will do in 2018. So wow. that journey starts today. But also today, for the first time ever, you're going to be cooking live on the show. Oh, gosh. How exciting. So you'll be actually cooking something. I'm not sure you could class it as cooking. I really don't. Adding water and stirring. So that's all coming later. But before all that, 
We have so many lovely projects to look at, so I think it's time that we find out. Kay Jones, what's on your needles? Oh, it's lovely. It is lovely. It's and and lovely. This actually is kind of three things in one. I'm knitting some cushion covers for our sofa. I think I spoke about this before, haven't I? Yeah. That we had, we originally had the mitered square cushions that you will have seen on, on past podcasts. But when we got our new sofa a few months ago, they just didn't go with it. So I've always planned on making some more and I was going to do mitered square ones, but I'm kind of... I don't know, I don't know if I'm a bit mitred squared out at the moment. I have still got my Disney blanket because I do want to finish that blanket. Of course, and absolutely. I'm sure I will go back into that frame of mind because I, you do, don't you? you? You kind of go on to other things and then you're like, oh no, I think I want to go back and do another block on that. That's so why hibernating I will, exists. Yeah, I mean, I will, I will go back to that. But I had the thought of doing some bits and bobs cushion covers because... You know, I love knitting the blanket so much that I thought, well, do you know what? Let's just give it a try. So I've actually got two. I'm knitting them concurrently. Is yeah. that the right word? Well, it'll do for me. Simultaneously means one after the other, doesn't it? So it's not that, it's concurrently. Yeah. So I've got two on the go and they've kind of turned out into like a Dan cushion and a K cushion. Cool. Which is kind of fun. But, oh, and look, I made myself a new bag. Oh, isn't it lovely? I've had this fabric for a little bit. It's Clark and Clark fabric again. And I just really loved it. And I thought it kind of looked wintry without being festive. So I really love that. It's Why is it called Clark and Clark? Well, maybe it was Mr. Clark and Mr. Clark that started it. I don't know. Well, you'd just call yourself Clark, wouldn't you? Or Clark Brothers. I don't know. I don't. Or is you, it... you wouldn't just say Clark. That's a bit short, isn't it? So maybe that's why they thought they have to call themselves Clark and Clark. Dyson. Well, that's true, yeah. Yeah. It's just a bit weird. Clark fabric. Is, is it spelled kind of... differently, each Clark? No. That's insane. It's Clark with an E. Um, so the first one that I cast on was this one. Oh, it's lovely. The background colour is like a sort of pale denim blue. And then I'm just obviously throwing in all my various coloured bits and bobs. So this is the yarn, let me find the tag actually. I'm using a skein of yarn and I think to be honest I'll probably need two skeins of yarn for the background. I did at first think oh it might only take you know one skein of yarn for the background plus the bits and bobs but, but looking at it I think it's going to take two which is fine. But this one that I'm using, this is really sort of precious stash and I'm of the opinion, and I'm going to do this next year more, is that I'm going to try and stop hoarding things and I'm going to start knitting with these yarns because you buy them because you love them, don't you? And then I really have a problem casting on yarns that I find to be so pretty and so precious for whatever the reason is. And this one is Juno Fibre Arts and she doesn't die any longer. So I've had this as long as whenever her last uh, final update was. I can't even remember when that was. I mean, it might be a couple of years ago, I don't know. And I bought this in her final update. And I have got another skein of hers in a deeper sort of blue. So it might be that I use that actually if I have to, to use another skein. But this one is in a colorway called Flotsam. It was a one-off dye lot. And it's 75.25 BFL nylon, 464 yards. And I think this is why I've never used it before because it's quite a fine fingering weight. And I just thought if I knit socks with that, I'm probably gonna have to use two millimeter and I don't wanna do that, honestly, I really don't. Um, so it's just sat there and then I thought about this project and I thought about this yarn and I thought, do you know what, I'm gonna use it. And it's this really pretty blue with little flecks of like a gold running through it. And it's lovely. That's the one I'm using for the background. And then I'm just using all these sort of random, quite, quite bright colors in their own right. But actually when you pair it with this blue, it really sort of tones down the brightness. So with this one, I'm just throwing in really any colours at all. I'm not being picky. I'm just, I've just gathered together a load of kind of my favourite colours. I've got all sorts in here. There's pale colours, there's, oh look, Alice Yarns, who we spoke about. Oh yeah. 
Alice Yarns, who were based in York, she's stopped dying recently and I picked up some of these minis at Spring Into Wool, so I've got quite a few of hers to put in, which is nice. I'm glad I've got those. And then just leftovers of all sorts of things, and I've also got some hedgerow minis, fondant fibre minis, all sorts of things I've got in there. So I worked out what I did to actually measure it. This will fit about an 18 inch cushion because that's the size on our sofa. So what I did was I laid out my blanket, my bits and, blob, bits and blobs, bits and bobs blanket and I put the cushion on top of it and then I just counted stitches across. And this is very stretchy, so what I, I, I kind of stretched out the fabric to how it would be and then counted the stitches and added in a couple just for seaming. And I've measured it and it looks more or less spot on, it'll be absolutely fine. So that's one that I'm doing and this one has turned out to be like Dan's cushion cover. And that's on 4mm, which is what the pattern calls for. Chow goose, because I just love chow goose really, I think it is my favourite needle. So that's that one. I wanted to have sort of two finished at the same time rather than just have one on the sofa and then have to wait for me to knit the other one, which is a bit sort of frustrating. I wanted to be able to put both of them on the sofa at the same time. So the other day I cast on this one, which has turned out to be completely girly and will be on my side of the sofa. And this one is slightly different. I'll show you first. I'll show you on the side that well, I've not got an end. Look, look, look. Oh my goodness. Can you see it's, I don't know if it'll come across. If I hold it like that, you might be able to see the fluff. I think you can see, look. Can you see how fluffy it is? This one I'm holding double with Rowan Kid Silk Haze. And the colour I'm using, I think it's called Rose. It's number 580. And it's this beautiful, soft, dusky pink. It's gorgeous. So this is my background colour and then again I'm using various bits and bobs. Now because the Kid Silk Haze is it's classed as a lace weight and I know that the haze element of it makes it kind of knit up a bit fluffier than a lace weight. It is still a smaller gauge than holding fingering weight double. So I went down a needle size for this, which I do suggest in the pattern actually, that if you do want to knit one with something like a kid's silk haze that you go down to a 3.75 millimeter and maybe cast on a few extra stitches just to compensate. So I did the same thing for this. I went down to 3.75 and I've added a few extra stitches to make up that difference. And you can, I mean, it was turning into like just purples and pinks. <laughs> so this morning I thought, oh, let's put in a different colour. Um, Didn't you do a blanket called the Pinky Purple Blanket? Yeah, it turned into a cushion. Of course it did. Which is in Bryony's bedroom yes. and use it when we're reading stories and things. It's lovely. Can you see this one here that I've put in? That's a self striping. I love putting in self stripings because the stitch count is such that it does stripe. You know, not as thick as in a sock, obviously, but you still get that self striping effect. And this one was the mini that lovely Jules sent me from So Sweet Violet, and it was done by Twisted Limone. It's a self striping colourway that she called Sweet, Sweet Violet, and it was designed to look like Jules's um, logo. So that was lovely to put in. And then I've got some, the grey is a Regia, Regia Tweed. And then the others actually are all yarns that, oh no, that one is the pink, poppy pink one there is, oh, I can't remember the name of the dyers. They're up in Scotland, String something. Oh, I can't remember. Um, but the other sort of two, three colours are yarns I've dyed. And the green that I'm just putting in is a little bit of a colour that I dyed recently for an update and it's Bow Truckle. Mm. And I think it's one of the most favourite greens I've ever... It's very specific and It's original. very specific. I, I mixed... I wanted to... If you don't know what Bow Truckle is, it's a, a reference to Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. And it's his little stick insect friend who's called Picket but the type of animal he is, is a bow truckle. Mm. And I wanted to dye a green that looked like sticking stick green, I suppose. So I mixed three different greens together and came up with that. And I just think it's the prettiest green. I was really, really pleased with it. So I, I had a tiny bit left over when I made up the minis for the, the little sets I did. So that's where I'm up to with that one. 
And then, knitting with this kid's silk haze just made me think, do you know what? I want a whole big blanket in this because it's the softest, fluffiest thing ever, isn't yeah. it? It's absolutely gorgeous. So I had this idea and I did a swatch. And uh, do you know, we've, I've got the Opal Advent Calendar as I know quite a lot of you have. And I thought, what do I want to do with it? Because to be honest, I've still got some of the ones left from the one I got two years ago that I'd, I never finished off. So I thought I wanted to use them for something that I knew I was gonna, where I was gonna use the whole of the little balls. Yeah. So I've decided to do a blanket starting with the opal minis and then I'll have to put in other opal yarns as well when I've finished those. And what I'm gonna do, here's the little swatch I did. So these two yarns are opal yarns. I just pulled them out of my mini sort of collection, leftovers. So imagine this is a huge blanket and I'm going to do, and it's, it's held double again with Kid Silk Haze and this is just cream. So I'm going to knit the mini and then I'm going to put a stripe in of the Kid Silk Haze held double just with white. This is just Cascade Heritage and I've got some of that in my stash. And then do the next one. And I think separating it with those stripes, it's nice. it breaks up the kind of, yeah. The craziness makes of it. Makes it stand out more too. Yeah, it makes it stand out. You can see the, the colours in their own right yeah. without them all merging together. And I think that'll be lovely because I'll be able to look back on it and count the days, you know. I don't know that I'm going to get each one done every day. I'm not going to set that as a target for myself because that will just stress me. But when I take out the minis each day, I'll put a number on the ball band so that I can then knit them in that order. And I'll be able to count the days, you know, of the advents. And then I can, when they're all finished, I can then just pull out other leftover opals that I've got and wind off 15 grams because it was 15 gram minis. I just think it'll be so lovely. I can't wait to start it. I don't have enough of the Kid Silk Haze. I've got to order that. Dan Jones? Yes. What's on your needles? Well, I've ripped out. Have I ever ripped anything out before? I don't think I have. The Uncommon Dragon, which I showed you last time, I got down a little way. And I'm not quite certain what the issue is because, you know, if you take a book which has designs in it and you make the extra small of those particular designs with exactly the same yarn, you would mm. expect them all to come out at, at the same size. Yeah, roughly. Or close. Yeah, yeah. Because I know there's obviously issues engaged. Well, this was not the case, dramatically so. No. I think I could have got my foot into this particular sock. Well, you could have, yeah. Should, so, ch should change the stitch count for this one. The yes. extra small size was a different stitch count. And I would presume that's because the pattern sucked it in. Yeah. But it really didn't suck it in enough to compensate all but those extra stitches. It, in, was it? it wasn't. It didn't seem to be, no. I mean, it was huge. It was massive, wasn't it? Now, this also highlighted a difference in Kay's and my approaches to life in general, I think. Oh, I got so frustrated. Because your approach is, well, just don't knit that one then. Yeah. And move on. Yeah. Well, my approach is, I said I'm going to knit all 10 of those socks, mm -hmm. and I'm going to, wow. because it's actually not about, this sounds silly, but I think when you do something like this, and when it's such a learning process, it's not actually about the finished item. It's about the journey and it's about what you learn on the journey. I think, see, I think that's why I'm different because I'm more of a... But don't get me wrong, I'm with you. If I just downloaded a pattern, mm. cast it on and it wasn't working, I'd just bin it. Mm. So I'm with but you. But it's because you've said to yourself you're going to do it. I'm going to do all those 10 socks yeah. and I'm going to. So I actually thought about this the other day. I've been thinking about this whole and I just put out a Darren Laura project yesterday all about this dilemma. And I think, I think I might have come to a conclusion and that is, I think I might just cast on 54. Well, what we're thinking is that we'll just cast, 54 we, fit it. we'll amend the, the pattern repeat and cast on less stitches. Yeah. 54 would be all right, well. But let's just do it. And you know, mm, worst case scenario. You could do 54 on a bigger needle. Right. But they fit briny. Well, they would. It's only two stitches, isn't it? Yeah. And those last ones you made her were quite were quite baggy on her feet. She, yeah. You know, she loves them. So I'm going to do I'm going to do 54, and right. if they fit, Brian, they, 
that, that, that's you great. See, you see, my thinking is that you've changed the pattern, therefore it's not, you're not knitting the pattern out of the book anyway. But I'm not. So why bother? But I'm not now, because I'm going to knit. If it's 54 stitches, then the extended one will fit it. I think we've got to the bottom of what we're going to do with the Uncommon Dragon, so that may well make an appearance next time. But today, what I've done in the meantime is I've got cracking on, and do you know what? I said to Kay, I'm, I'm going to, I thought I'm going to hibernate this towards the end of the project. And then with the Uncommon Dragon thing, and with me not having another yarn ready at that particular moment to, to cast on the next pair of socks, I just thought, do you know what? I'm just going to get knitting. Do you know what? I'm really enjoying it actually a second time. And I think that the reason why I'm enjoying it is because I've started this whole history thing and because I'm starting to sort of get into the, the whys and the wherefores, certainly with regards to socks at the moment, but as I wrote in the article in The, the Most Current Knitability, and so many people didn't know about the whole Raglan thing mm. and why that sleeve was designed. Mm. Because- He lost an arm. He lost, he lost an arm, but crucially, they they needed to design a jacket for him which would give his other arm maximum movement right. so he could still wield his sword, sword. because he mm. wanted to stay on the battlefield. And so many people didn't know that. And then also, you know, Raglan also is Raglan Castle and Raglan Castle is one of the most stunning castles. I don't know if you recall, but once when I was driving to Wales, mm. I stopped the car, this castle oh, was so I stunning. Remember, I remember, And I think I phoned you up and said, I'm looking at yeah. the most stunning castle I've ever seen, mm. Raglan Castle in Wales. One day we must do a, a new adventure there mm. because it is just amazing. So I've cast on the next one, and it, it's and it's the bootstrap. It's the Did bootstrap. It's the bootstrap sock with the Balbriggan heel, and it's such it's such fun, and it's such fun because just sticking in those three pearl bumps mm. every other row. I do that's like. That's enough. I do like that. That takes a vanilla sock and turns it into something with enough interest to keep me knitting. Yes, the foot is gonna be a struggle, but I'm- It's I'm, just a bit odd, isn't it, Luke? But that's fine. Odd is fine once we understand the reason why it's yeah, odd. Yeah. And I know when we, I, I'm gonna make a prediction. We're gonna uncover the full story next year in the new series, Dan's History of Knitting, uh, which will start for patrons in January. And we're gonna uncover the full story of why the Balbriggan Hill is like that. Mm. And I bet you once we know the story, I bet you you love them. Because it'll have something well, to do with the royals be, you and know, the Queen Victoria. You know, they'll be wearable, but I just don't, they wouldn't, I don't imagine they'd be wearable in shoes because just because of this extra bit of fabric here, you know, bunching under your heel. But I suppose we just, you know, time will tell and we'll just have to wear them and they might be fantastic, who knows? But there is the next sock. I've made a load of progress, which is really good because I only cast them on a few days ago. Yeah. That is my second bootstrap sock. Lovely. What else is on your needles? Well, it's something that I'm not even sure that I'm going to carry on with this. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you for why. I'm oh, not interested. <laughs> and it's the snore heed. Is that how you say it? You know. Snore heed hat. It's nothing to do with the pattern at all. It's a lovely pattern and I love the hat. But I started this some weeks ago because we were talking about um, projects I enjoyed and challenging and everything with the patrons weren't we and I was like do you know what I'm going to cast that hat on and I haven't touched it since and I've not wanted to pick it up and it's it can I kind of feel like it's not haunting me but taunting me <laughs> is that the right word I'm not sure I don't really know why and I think what it is I is, know why because you're bonkers Maybe. That is a distinct possibility. It's certainly not the pattern and it's certainly not the yarn because the yarn I've knit with a lot recently and you'll you'll see that in finished objects, so it's not that. I just don't think I enjoy knitting colour work with such a fine yarn because that hat I really enjoyed, the Susan B. Anderson yes. one, was thick yarn, it was worsted weight. And I did really enjoy knitting that. But I think it's the fact that this is such fine yarn and it feels like I've got a lot, you know, it's it's all colour work. The whole hat is colour work. I just don't think that's my type. It's certainly not Zen knitting for me and I know for other people it is. But I've only got this far and you, can, you can't even, I've not even finished one snowflake yet. I don't know that you can kind of see it, look. And I'm also not sure that it's going to be really big enough. 
I, I did think that when I was casting on. And is there two sizes? I forget. No, there's only one size. And when I was casting on, I was thinking, mm, I don't know. And I'm sure, you know, I thought I'll trust the pattern and everything and I'll just cast it on. But I quite like, I don't like hats to be very close fitting. I like a bit of ease in them and I'm not even sure looking at the, you know, it just seems like it'd be a bit small. Um, I think it'd be more of a fitted beanie. I could be wrong. It could be that when I block it, you know, it would stretch out a lot. But I think it's mainly because I'm just, I'm not wanting to knit it and I've barely knit any of it and I've got the whole hat to knit. So I just think, do you know what? I, I don't want to have the thing lurking in the background if I know it's something that I'm not going to want to go back to. But I was using Jameson and Smith two ply jumper weight in these two lovely colours. And the yarn's lovely, you know, and I'm kind of disappointed in myself that I'm not enjoying it. I keep thinking I won't rip it out because I'll go back to it and then I will enjoy it. But I've, it's been sat there for weeks and I've not wanted to go back to it. But the two colours I'm using are 1280, which is this lovely um, sort of grey with lots of flecks of sort of a mauvey colour and sort of blue. It's really pretty. And then the purple is 133, just in case you wanted to replicate the colours, because they are lovely. So this may not survive the day, to be honest, because I might rip it out. And then the other thing is, I do love the yarn. And, and again, I'll talk about this in finished objects, but it is, it is quite a rustic yarn. And I am a bit bothered that it won't be a hat that I want to in instantly go and grab and put on my head, because it's not super soft. You can see all the dilemmas. You see, but then you think, then I think, I overthink things. Really, everyone's saying? <laughs> yes, I do. As Dan knows, I overthink things to a ridiculous degree. So maybe I'm just overthinking it. So maybe I'll just hibernate it. You know, I'll stick it in a project bag and I'll just leave it. And then I might come back to it, might I? And then there's people who are knitting along with me who have like finished their hats and I just feel so bad because, you know, they finished their hats. Oh. <laughs> because they finished their hats and I've barely even started mine. I feel like I've let those people down for not finishing it. So. A bakery bag glove. Maybe I'll just, oh, honestly, maybe I'll just hibernate it and have another little think. I don't know. But I'm disappointed in myself, which is silly, isn't it? And I know that's silly, but that's just the way my brain works. So, there we go. Do you want to show us that ridiculousness look, on your look. hand? I'm making, it's a test knit, it's a bakery bag glove. <laughs> looky, looky, look at this. I'm filming this journey and we're also, we're cutting in a new edit of Kay's toy knitting tutorials. All this is to support the toy along, support everyone who's knitting toys at the moment and who's treble dipping in Victorian studio, pen hook and needles and a bakery bear's threads. So, so many opportunities to win something. And it's a rite of passage, let me tell you, isn't it? You know, it's bakery you... bear's podcast. Oh right, yes. I've sat watching and what's been interesting for me is I've recently gone back through Kay's pictures which are just hilarious because there's so many thousands of them and I you don't know, know how to delete I've been able to find like so many bakery bears that you know from years and years ago that got sent off and went different places and you know that's been just so interesting mm. to see and it's as you look at those that you start to realize the reason why I hadn't knit one because the pressure was so intense because I've sat watching so many of them being created you know, for you then to try and sit down and do it, it's just insane. So the process we've gone through is a brilliant one because we've been revisiting some of the tutorials, updating those. I've been following those through. We've been videoing that. Um, so we've been learning all together. Um, and this is what has happened. Look, he's nearly, a, he's nearly a face. He is nearly a face. He's got his nose. It just needs now, it, eyes and his, his um, smile and his little nose. It's an interesting one because... I knit loads and loads, and actually there'll be a video coming out soon, patrons, which I, I, I talk about this, and it's 
the difference between the knitted on custom and the long tail custom. In the pattern, you say you can use any custom, but you recommend mm. using the knitted on custom. We've seen firsthand what it looks like now with other cast ons, mm. and mine just didn't look right. No. So the knitted on cast on really, for, for things like the ears, the ears is absolutely um, key. It doesn't matter so much for things like, you know, the tops of the arms and things like that, but for the ears and for the nose in particular, because you, you use that cast on edge for sewing it down. It does make a difference. What it did with the ears was, my ears didn't really have any shape. No. Whereas with the Neston Caston, it gave them shape and made it look like a bear's ears. Mm. And I wonder if this is a, 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 a trick and a tip that people should take on board for knitting any toy. If you're knitting, you know, who knows what body part it might be. Mm. If you've knit it, or if you've cast it on, you knit it and you think it doesn't look quite right, it may be that you need to look at that cast. It could be, because I know um, Julie, who does Little Cotton Rabbits, she always uses a cable cast on. And I don't like doing a cable cast on, but I do always use a cable cast on when I'm knitting her toys, because I do I know how important and how much of a difference the cast on can make. Yeah. Clearly, clearly it is. And we, we've done a knitted on cast on, and yeah. it, it's, it was fun to do that because it we was. did the Irish version. Well, no, we did a knitted on cast on tutorial and I added in an extra little thing that my mum always does when she does that cast on. And it's so funny because so many of our patrons then commented and said, oh my gosh, this brought back so many memories because my mum always did it like that or my granny always did it like that. So that was really lovely. Absolutely was. And it then takes it full circle for me then because that's then when I start thinking history again and why did yeah, they do that and yeah. how far back. And there is a technical reason as to why they did it. You know, it, I want to know though when that technical when reason it, yeah, was brought in. Yeah. Who brought it in? Mm. You know, these things I think are super interesting for all of us as knitters because, you know, understanding where things were and mm. how they've got to where they are now, mm. for me, helps me you know, really get the most out of knitting this and doing the knitted on cast on, knowing the reason why it's so important. Um, but there's the head and the body already seems done. I've yeah. done both arms, arms and I was part way through an arm, I think, last time. Yeah. And look, look, look. Look, he's done a foot look, and he foot. did that all by himself. And it, I know that's that. <laughs> he did it all by himself. And look, look. And and that's the part way through another foot. It's great. Yeah. It's so great. you've only got that foot to do and you've knit all the parts. Yeah, but then I've got to knit the, the top. The top. You'll enjoy knitting the jumper. Yeah, I know, I know. It's got cables. Yes, on. cables. And does it have raglan sleeves? No. Oh, right, okay. Well, that's cool because I've doesn't, never done it. It doesn't need raglan sleeves. That's fine. Because he, 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 where's the jumper? Oh, here's one. Um, because his arms do the, the UP thing, don't they? Yes, because so they're it doesn't, it doesn't do that. No. You know, because they're always happy. Yeah. I'm absolutely loving it. And this is coming from someone who never thought they'd knit a toy. And Susan Claudino, it's all your fault. It's your fault. Because if you hadn't sent me some of that lovely yarn, us, some of that lovely yarn. You stole it all, Susan. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I have not. You did. If you hadn't sent me some of that lovely yarn, yarn, I never would have been inspired to knit the wasabi. And then that then has, has led me on to this. So, you know, who knows what the future holds because there's still so much more, you and know, I'll tricky you little should, things to do. You should try do. and get it finished for Brian's birthday. I don't know if you will, though. There's no, a no, bit no. of pressure that is in there. So we won't say that. Christmas, yeah. Because yeah. it's Brian's birthday very soon. So. Yeah. yeah. And the yarn is just the business. It's lovely, it yeah. It really is cool. It's working out really nicely. It's and it's got Christmas. a slight halo to it, which is nice for a bear. And this was a gift from Yarn Order. It was. It's, it's really it's lovely. It's lovely, yarn. Amber. Thank you. Absolutely love it. What else is on your purpley needles? I know, I cast on something new yesterday and this is, I know I am trying to get down my works in progress and I am doing that, but then also... You had loads of things finished last episode. Yeah, and I did, before. I did. And I've finished a few things this time. So I thought, Do you know what, I can afford to cast on something new. And I've had this pattern printed off for weeks and weeks and weeks and it's just been sat on my desk and I've never cast it on. Yesterday I thought, Do you know what, I'm going to do that because I remembered some yarn that I'd got and both of these yarns were lovely gifts from people this year and when I thought about them together I thought, oh, do you know what, I'm going to do that and I'm knitting, it's a free pattern on Ravelry and it's the Simple House Slippers by Temple of Knit and it's just this, it is really just this really simple little, like a little booty type thing isn't it? 
And the pattern recommends using a light worsted weight or two fingering yarns held together. So I thought, well, I've got this, I've got one yarn which is a sport weight, and then I've got this other yarn which is a light fingering, so I thought that should work. And the two yarns I'm using, the light fingering weight is actually an opal, it was a new one that they brought out this year, and this was a, a lovely gift, and it's called Opal Light. It's a three ply instead of a four ply, and you get, it's 75 grams, and you get 425 meters. So it's the same meterage, but it's only 75 grams. So you can see the difference with the, um, you know, the thickness of the yarn. And this colorway is Hohenflug. Really? Bless you. And I Googled it yesterday, and I think it means flight of fancy. It's this one. It's number 9353. And it's purples and pinks and little dashes of blue and yellow. It's super lovely. So that's that one, that's the opal. And I'm pairing it with the most fascinating yarn. <laughs> this, is, this is amazing stuff. And this was a gift this year. And it's, I was thrilled to get this. It's Beaver Slide Dry Goods. Now this is a yarn I would never be able to get and someone sent it, it's a lovely gift, I was so thrilled and I've kind of been waiting for the perfect project and this seemed perfect because the mix is 80% merino, 20% kid mohair. Well mohair is like nature's nylon isn't it? So I thought if I'm using that alongside the opal it should make brilliantly sturdy slippers. And this colour is wild geranium. And it's three and a half ounces and you get 380 yards and I mean it says it says look at that colour oh, I mean oh, look at them together just beautiful the colour is amazing on this this is lovely stuff I'm probably preaching to the converted aren't I everybody out there is going yeah we know we, we know it's lovely I've, I've never had it and it's really soft, it's merino, you know, but it's not, su it's not superwash. I'm presuming it's not, it can't be. It doesn't say whether it is or not, but it can't be superwash, I don't think. Um, and it's a two-ply, yeah, it's just a two-ply. And it kind of looks like handspun. You know, it really does look like handspun. It's so incredibly light. It feels like it weighs nothing, like it would float off. I just find that I just find it fascinating you know so it's very soft it's kind of got a dryness to it do you know what I mean when I say that it's not it's not scratchy at all even the mohair I don't think makes it scratchy and I think when it wash you know when you wash it as well gosh I bet it washes up you know for a garment or a shawl or something really beautifully um, so I'm using that held together with the opal and I cast these on yesterday and the first thing you do is you just knit a garter, a garter piece. So I've done that and ho holding it double look, you just get little specks of the opal showing through and I think it's just lovely. And it's producing a really sturdy fabric. I do wonder though, I think my gauge, it doesn't say what the gauge is on the pattern, but this to me, I've knit the number of rows it says to do and it just doesn't look long enough to me. What you do is you fold it and that becomes like the back, This your heel is here and you put your foot in here. This just doesn't look big enough so I think I might knit a few more rows. And then what you do is you join it in the round and then knit just stocking, stocking stitch foot and do some decreases at the end. So I think I'm going to, I know when I, when I wash them it's going to block a bit longer like that but I still think I'm, I might just knit maybe four more rows, so two more garter ridges just to be sure that that's going to be big enough. But it's the super, you know, I think it's a fantastic project this because this is another thing that might become for me a kind of zen, zen knit because it's very simple but you are doing something, you slip in the edge stitches just to get a really nice finish because that will be the top, your foot will be going in there. So you've got this really nice slip stitch edge. So you are doing a little something each row and then you're joining it in the round and you're doing stocking stitch and then you're doing some decreases. So it's all simple things but there's still a little bit of something going on. So I'm really enjoying those and I might, depending on how these work out, I mean that. 
I never knit do you, these days. I never knit anything for myself, so I'm going to try and keep these for. Hopefully not for me. No, I'm going to try and keep these for me. But if Brian, I've got a problem with it. If Brian likes them, then you know she might, might have them. Or you know I could just knit another pair for Brian, couldn't I? And keep these ones. I really think I should keep these ones because the yarns are so special, and they were both gifts from lovely people. So yes, I think I will. And I'm using Knit Pick Sunstruck for these. I do like these needles and I think the reason I, I go go to these rather than the Knit Pro Harmonies is because they're a light colour and this yarn is quite dark and using dark needles, especially at night time, you know, winter winter's drawing in and everything, your stitches are more difficult to see and I do really like the natural wood colour. So they're, they're excellent needles these, very pointy Lovely, you know, if you like wooden needles, then I would recommend the Knit Picks Sunstruck. They're very nice. So yeah, and that's the Beaver Slide dry goods. It's got such a cute little, uh, such a cute little tag. And they are in, Montana is MT, Montana. I'm getting better at the abbreviations for states, but I'm not completely there yet. But I think that must be Montana. <gasps> look, look at that. Look. It's, nearly, it's nearly down to my belly button. I wonder how long it is on me. Do you want to try? Not long enough. You've got a very long body. I have got a long body, but, but that's still. fine. I've not got a problem. I love knitting this. It's down to. I it's below love, my waist. That's nuts. It's below my waist. Well, I know I've got a bit of a distance to go because you're going to want it down to about there, aren't you? No. Well, no, not that long. I don't mind because it'll stretch. I don't mind. Well, no, but what I'm saying is you'll block it. It'll it'll stretch. It's super wash. Okay. So okay, but do not to... underestimate this, okay? I will do it at whatever length you want it, and yeah, then I'll make and another. I, I'm looking at it now, I mean, I am a tiny bit smaller than I used to be, so it's going to the side of my body. Yeah. So I think it'll fit. Yeah. Which I'm thrilled by. I, I cannot begin to Ooh, even isn't it find the words. I want to wear it now. I want to eat it. Look how lovely it is. I can't even find the words as to how much I'm enjoying knitting this. Brilliant. I'll knit on this. Knit me another. Tons, I will. Oh, I'd like a white one for okay. winter. Okay. That might, oh, tweed. Okay. White, okay. you know, cream tweed. Oh, yes. That'd be beautiful, yes, yes. wouldn't it, in the winter with like leggings and Ugg boots. Oh, I've got a whole image going on in my head. I've knit tons on this. Tons and tons and tons it's on this. It's gorgeous. And I, I'm not complaining for one of the moments that I've knit on it because I enjoy every moment of it. And it's, look, we, we never show the back, but look. Oh, I always do. Oh, right. The cables I spin around. are on the back. It's a deliberate well, that's dig just, at you. That's <laughs> just a join of yarn there. My mum will be loving this. Mum, if you're watching, look how well he's done. Oh. It, it is, you know, it's the ultimate I love a cable club. You oh. know, it's so cool to, you, you've got the concentration of the cable, but then you've got the, the nice run of, of knitting you know, running around the side. It's the perfect mm. combination, really. I don't think I've fully appreciated how lovely this is until now. Well, that's, that's I cracking. I don't know why. I think that... Maybe I just thought I'd never, never, never going to get it, but now I've seen how much you've done. That's nice, isn't it? I think Because the sleeves are nothing, they're just tiny. I think my tension lends itself to knitting garments. Beautiful. Don't you? Yes, because you, you're you firm. It's a firm tension, which when you're using superwash yarn, I think is a good thing because you do get so much drop don't you so much stretch and my i think my gauge is fairly even it's very even you've got beautiful tension i mean i i i, I mean I, it's gorgeous oh it's, thanks i mean look look at his look at his tension look at that i mean that's amazing isn't it that's just another drain of yarn down there it's i mean you're doing such a fantastic job darling it's not difficult is it to see why knitting's cool and, you know, I pull it back to the interview I did this morning on the radio. All we want to do is we want to show knitting as a vibrant, exciting, cool thing to do. And doing this, mm. you know, a bloke doing this, that's cool. It's isn't very it? cool. A, a lady doing this also is cool. But, you know, if we but can it's break more down stereotypes. Isn't yes, it? Yeah. We can break down stereotypes. And the only thing that's stopping thousands of millions of men doing this and loving it is themselves. Absolutely. It's their brain and it stupid is. barriers. So if you are a guy 
who has never knit before and you sat there with your significant other watching. Because we know there are you. Yeah, we know, we know you're, you're out there. We know you're out there. We know we get um, husbands watching. Take it from me. If I could give you one piece of advice, honestly, honestly, one piece of advice is knit. Stick at it for a little bit and the effect it will have on your head, it'll blow your mind. And then you'll be doing this and you'll be mm. making it. For, for, you know, your, whoever it might be, you know, it might be yourself, it, because I've worn one of these and it did suit me. It might be for uh, your significant other or maybe one of your kids or who knows. And, you know, I know now, I said at the start of this, I had a feeling I might enjoy knitting garments. And I do. Mm. So, you know, I'll, I would happily do another. You know, unless it suddenly becomes monotonous and annoying by the end. It won't. It won't. Mm. Because th that, you know, there was concentration involved mm. there. And I enjoyed mm. doing, I enjoyed doing all of that. So, you know, the thought of doing all that again, I, I'm, I'm into that. Mm. So, you know, I think I might, and we've, we've said before, haven't we? We spoke before, I can't remember if it was the last podcast, if it was on a pop, you know, you have a tendency to do a pattern and then go, yeah, I've done that, I'm moving on. Mm. If I found a pattern that I like, and it's funny because this pattern's terribly written, but actually, it's true. Actually, it, it, what's there is brilliant. The finished design is lovely, yes. but it's yes. it's a tricky pattern to interpret. Mm. Yeah. I, I found it so, and Dan found it so as well. Yeah, well, of course, you know, anytime we say anything, it's our opinion. Yeah, and you know, absolutely. you know, I don't should we cut anything. It, it, it is, though, superb. It's a great thing to do, um, and I'm loving it. Yeah. What else is on your knees? Well, I'm kind of going to show these together because I've got something that I, I need to start and it's panicked me a bit thinking about Bryony's birthday because it's it's quite soon. And I planned on having these finished for her birthday and I've not even started them. What? A pair of socks. Oh, all right. Oh, don't worry about it. She's I know. Well, bothered. I know. So. Good for Christmas. Uh, well, maybe, no, because Christmas ones is a different yarn and I'll talk about that in any bits. But so I got these lovely little minis from Sarah, lovely Sarah Hepworth, and she just knit some socks. Basically, it's just one repeat, one colour repeat of the, um, it's the first, the four founders. So it's all of the houses of Harry Potter. And I commented and said, oh, they're fantastic. Because what she'd done is the rest of the sock was grey, you know, like school uniform, grey. So she sent me, she said, oh, I've got a colour repeat left on each of my half balls. So I'll send it to you. So I thought that's just so kind of her and very typical of Sarah. So thank you so much. And I've got these. And my thought was I was going to do exactly how, you know, I was going to do exactly what Sarah had done. And I've got this yarn in my stash. It's Cascade Heritage in this kind of, like I say, school uniform grey. I think it's charcoal. Um, I just haven't got around to starting them. And then, do you know when I finished Bryony's Gryffindor socks a little while ago? I used Cascade Heritage for it all. And she's worn these a few times, not that many times, I'll be honest. And they have pearled like the absolute devil. She's quite, she is rough on her socks. I don't know what she does. I think she walks around doing that. <laughs> but just look how badly they've pearled. You're all going, oh! <laughs> and then quite rightly. I mean, that's terrible pilling, isn't it? And it's this grey that I planned on using. So that kind of put me off. I'm thinking, oh my goodness, this if they're just going to pill like that. And what I'll do with these is I'll try and de-pill them and, you know, give them a wash. And maybe they won't pill quite as much. Maybe it's an initial pilling, I don't know. So I ordered a ball of opal and the nearest, they, they have a very pale grey, like a silver grey. And then they've got this one, with, which is anthracite. So I thought I'll order that, but it's actually quite a bit darker. This is that one, look. It's quite a lot darker. So I was like, oh, but then I thought this morning, well, it might work anyway because their robes are black, aren't they? And their uniform's grey. So it might actually work if I use the opal with these. So that's what I might do. And I know that if I use opal, I can use two and a half millimetre needles as well. So that will speed up the process. So these might, I don't know, they might get done before a birthday or it might just have to wait. But at some point I will make these, Sarah, I promise. So that's that. And then my last project is another sock. That's why I've just done these together. And I cast this on very recently, actually. 
and this is yarn that I've dyed and I did some little sets. The last update that I did just this weekend, just gone, I did some little sets with minis and I wanted to dye up a colourway that was a tribute, is that the right word? To the new Star Wars film that's coming out in December. And I had in my mind that I wanted it to look kind of neutrally and spacey. Does that even make any sense? <laughs> Well, I came up with this colourway and I absolutely love it and I had to steal a ball of it and start a sock straight away because I just loved it so much. So it's, it's shades of, there's um, greys and browns and there's some chestnut in there. Just all these kind of neutral colours. But I just think it's so pretty. And I called this the dark side and the light. Dan named it, and I didn't call it, you named it for me, didn't you? The dark side and the light. Then that made me think, do you know what? I'm going to do some minis to go with it for heels and toes. And one of them I dyed up was called Skywalker, and that picked out the paler grey. And then I also did Vader, which is the darker shade that's in there. So it's not black but it just picks out the darker shades. So I've got Vader, so that'll be my sort of heels and toes. Would it be unfair to say that I named it? You told me what you were doing with it and I threw out some ideas and then you picked them. Yeah, but I know I came, said I came that, up with it, you but you were the one who chose that as the name. Well, I did, but I just you, suggested it you suggested after you the, described it. Okay, well you suggested the name and then I said- I wouldn't presume yes, I to will. tell you the name of your colorways. <laughs> and I just love how it's, I love how it's knit up. I was just so keen. That's it in the in the cake. I was just so keen to see how it would knit up that I just had to quickly cast on a sock and I just love it. I think it's just such a pretty shade and I think it would be great as a jumper actually. I think it would make a great jumper. You'd have to alternate obviously but yeah so I'll be doing some more of this in the next update and then after that I'll be doing some Christmas colourways I think. I might save this now until the film comes out. Yeah. I think that makes sense. Yeah. You know, because I'm at the heel, it's a great place to stop. So I think I'll pick that up again maybe the week before the film comes out and start working on that. Cool. So, yeah. That's the end of What's On Your Needles. So it's time for us to start a brand new segment. Now, we have already taken you into the world of sweets. That was our first tasting things, yeah. wasn't it? And then we took you into a world that we knew. It was safe. Biscuits. Mm -hmm. Trying all our favourite biscuits. Yeah. But I don't know about you, but when you walk around the supermarket, the world food aisle seems to have got huge. And we, we just breeze past it, don't we? We yeah. never stop and look and see what's there. So what we thought we would do is take us all on a culinary journey. Neil, we're going to ease ourselves in gently. Yes. With something that we think we should like. Yes. Although, I'll I'll be honest, I'm sceptical. You won't, I don't no. think. So I'm more likely to like it. First of all, let me welcome you to the Bakery Bear's World Food Aisle. And it's time for us to try... You ready? Yes. Idahoan Perfect Mash. Now, we spotted this in the supermarket <laughs> just the other week, and clearly it's a new thing because adverts are starting to appear yeah, on the telly. Yeah, they are, they are. I'd love to know if you've seen this product anywhere, or if you've tried this product and what you think. But what we're going to do is, we're going to try it, we're going to both mark it out a five, we'll add those scores together mm -hmm. to give us a score out of a ten, and then we'll produce a lovely little leaderboard, because you seem to like those. So over the course of uh, this, however long we run it for, we'll produce a leaderboard and you'll know what we've liked and what we haven't liked. Okay. So, so I have to make it first of all, it's like, it comes like this. Let's get cooking. It's like a sort of powder, it smells a bit. Yeah. Um, Go on then, do you want to pour it in? I'll hold, I'll hold it there. We've made, this is boiling water, so we're so going to be very careful. Pour it in, pour it in. Now, that got does to, not yet no, look like potatoes. To, it has to sit for a minute. No, put it on there, it's boiling hot. So you just let it sit. Well, I'm going to give it a stir. It doesn't say to Ooh, you, actually. I'm getting a potato smell. Oh. That looks like very watery mashed potato. It does. It's now beginning to thicken. Well, we have to now let it sit. Maybe, I wonder, and I bet you, this is the type of technology that they take into space. Maybe so, I think. I s Although they couldn't add hot water, could they? It's all... They can't add hot water in space. It's all in packets. Oh, well, that's true. If they poured it, it would just float <laughs> off, wouldn't it? What an idea I have. So um, it must be like stuff that the army have and 
It, maybe yes, I'll maybe so. That's... Because I mean, just looking at the ingredients, I mean, with regards to things like fat, it's quite low in fat actually. Why does it say with butter flavor? Butter flavor. The, they had different flavors, and this was the only one that we felt brave enough to try. This is just a butter flavor. Does it have actual butter? Let's see. Does it have real potatoes in it? Yes, seventy-four percent potatoes. So, Idaho potatoes. There you go. It's the, it's the potato state, I think it's known as. It is, and we've got some viewers in Idaho. Right. Yes. We're, we're going to eat some of your potatoes. Absolutely. It's got like vegetable oil, um, milk powder, milk solids, cream, flavourings, preservatives, spice extracts. I, I did bring the salt. Right, well, I don't think... It shouldn't need salt. Okay. I'm guessing there's a lot of salt. Salt. Okay. It does have added salt, so right. let's not add any. Okay. So we're trying um, it. Suitable for vegetarians, gluten free. It's obviously not suitable for vegans. That's but, a minute. Um, is that a minute fluff already? It up, fluff it up with a fork. It now says fluff it up. Oh, it do, I mean. I think we should show it before we try it. It looks all right. Dan's skeptical. Nick. Look, it kind of looks like mash, doesn't it? Do you think? It kind of smells like mash. You have a go um, then. You want me to try it first? Are you a bit scared of it? It's going to be hot, no, no, isn't no, I don't it? Mind. Oh, it smells good, actually. It's really nice. It smells really good. <laughs> it's like smash. Oh, I like it. It is like smash. Do you smash. know what? I'm going to get more of this oh, because crumbs. <laughs> I'm just thinking for a quick lunch. Oh no! Not for you if you don't want it. Oh, but no. there's not a lot of fat Matter. in it. I was looking at the fat content right. and saturated fat per 100 grams, it's only 1.4 grams. Right. That's pretty good. I've got to say, I am pleasantly surprised. And there's no lumps. It's absolutely lovely. <laughs> there's no lumps at all. Well, no, because it's a powder. I think it's really nice. This, might be, my well. this might be my lunch. <laughs> I'm a convert. I absolutely love it. Well, I think I don't. I think it's nicer. That I've not had Smash for probably. Yeah, well, I can't think. it's probably years. similar to what Smash is now. Do you think we should have got some Smash to, to compare do a it taste with? Test, shouldn't we? Yeah. Well, no. Let's just accept the fact that this is mm. pretty, pretty nice. I wonder why Idaho is the potato state. Is it, it must really be flat soil. Like our soil? I shall tell okay. you. It's rich volcanic soil uh, and clear mountain water, ideal for potato growers. Right. Well, there Sounds you go. lovely. I want to move there. And I will try mm. just a tiny bit more. And I'm loving it. Well, I've tried a tiny bit more. You've got to think of a score. Ooh, out of what? Five. Five. <laughs> Kay's giving it five. I am. You, if you ate that and didn't know it was real mash, this is the question. No, I, I, I would you know. think it was mash? Yeah. I think I would think it was normal mash as well, which is amazing because I didn't think you're not yeah. convinced. I'm going to sit here and eat I'm not, this bowl. Of I'm not mash totally potato. convinced. No, I mean it, it, you can tell. I bet you, given how amazing that tastes, I'm going to taste some to my mum's. Mum, I think you'd love it. I have a feeling that Idaho potatoes must be pretty darn stunning. That is lovely. Because it's, if you're able I'm to cook shocked them, at how good this is. If you're able to cook them, freeze dry them, packet them, send them, you know, thousands of miles around the world, and then them still taste like that, well, they must be awfully nice to start with. Oh, totally and it makes what? me want to try a real Idaho potato. Mm. We'd have to go to Idaho, of course. To we do would, because I don't think they'd travel. Uh, I, I, my first, when it hit my mouth, it, it, I just had that smash feel. If I'm brutally honest. The texture. It's not quite isn't there. Isn't quite. I mean, but you wouldn't expect it to be, would you? The only thing that's wrong with it is the texture's just not quite right. No, the but texture's that's gonna be not quite there. But because. do you know what? For a minute, <laughs> and boiling the kettle. I'll give it three and a half. Oh, really? You don't like it that much, do you? It's we're we're going to stop recording and you're going to say I hate no, it. No, 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 no. That's not true. It's not true. I don't fib. So it's eight and a half. Eight and a half. Mm. Onto the leaderboard it goes. That's our first day on the World Food Isle. Next time, who knows what we'll be trying, but let me tell you, it will be daring. We'll go safe, and then we'll go daring. Ooh. So we've done the safe to ease ourselves into this brand new segment. Next time, we'll be daring. So who knows what mm. that'll be. 
It's time for us to find out. Yeah. Kay Jones. I'll put the potatoes down. Now put the potatoes down, Kay. Kay Jones, what's off your needles? Well, I do have a couple of things. I have something too. Do you want to do yours? No. But if you've got two, I'll, I'll go. Well, two. I've got two and a half, actually, to be fair. All right. I've just done another round of the Harry Potter club, the mystery club that I've been doing with our patrons, the yarn colourways. This one went out about a week and a bit ago. So if you're in the UK, you'll already have it. If you're in the US, you might not have yours yet. So if you don't want spoilers, then just skip over a couple of minutes. But this was the colourway. Let me get a sock blocker. For well, what this it's month. all right saying skip over a couple of minutes. What I will do, folks, is I will stick at the bottom a time link as to when she stopped talking okay. about this. Okay. So if you it check, the, if minutes. you pause now, check the show notes at the bottom, you'll see where you need to skip to. Okay. And the colourway was um, brought on by my character. No, I'll say that again. The colourway was inspired by lovely Luna, Luna Lovegood. And I called it, I hope there's pudding, because she says that quite a few times, didn't she, in the films. And I've knit a sock out of it. And you wonder what she means by that, because she is she talking about American pudding? Or is she no, talking about English pudding? English pudding. So pudding would be any sweet yeah, thing afters. that follows we a would, main course. No, would you would call it afters. Oh, okay. Everyone else would call it dessert. There's people out there that are shouting, we call it afters. I'm sure there is. What do you want for your afters? Dessert. People, please tell me the people uh, You are the that. first person I've ever met in the world who calls it afters. Well, that can't be right. Somebody tell me. What do you want for pudding? What Helen, do you want for dessert? Scully Woolly, tell me that you say afters. You're, you're, anyway. Are you talking to Yorkshire people there, I wonder? Well, maybe it's a Yorkshire thing. I am talking to Yorkshire people there. Yes. So I've knit a sock out of it and I say a sock because this is actually a completed pair, but it's a mismatched pair with the colourway that's going to be November. So I will show you that one at a later date. But this is the colour um, for Luna. And Bryony's actually worn these ones because she she was that keen that she kind of like, oh, let me wear them. So she's worn them once, so they are a bit fluffed on the bottom because that's what she does. So it's this lovely variegated and there's yellows and blues and pinks and a bit of lilac. And that's it in the It's cake. beautiful. It came out lovely. It's very subtle. It's I was really pleased. I wanted it to be, you know. What's so cool about that is there's loads of colours, but it's subtle. It is quite subtle, and this is my prairie socks pattern, which I think looks lovely with it. So yeah, that's the I hope there's pudding colourway. So that's that finished. That stitch looks familiar to me. Yes, because okay, you... that's fine. Okay. I and now then, know. And then I must knit those. You were only saying that to me the other day. And then the next thing I finished was my lovely pair of opal socks. Oh, I'm so pleased with them. Aren't they fun? And I can wear them now. I'm thrilled. I might save them actually for Halloween. Yeah. Your first ever opal socks, aren't they? For me? Yes. Yes. So I'm just so excited to wear them and they're washed and blocked and everything. And just lovely. They're just washed up. Opal's just fabulous, isn't it, is. it? There's no two ways about it, really. It really is. Is that what I'm wearing? So, no. Is that opal? It is an opal base and right. I dyed it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So my lovely opal socks. Now this is the opal graffiti. It is a discontinued range now, but I bought this fairly recently. So if you hunt around, just, you know, put opal graffiti into you search engine you should you know you might be able to find some because there's other colorways as well i've got one of the colorway of this um still to knit up so that's those all finished just plain 64 stitches normal normal everything i did a square heel turn i do like that one because you have to do less gusset decreases i did a square heel turn on brownies yeah turn squared. i just totally really... intimated that like an irish person <laughs> you did didn't you and, and they fit brilliantly yeah, and it does fit really nicely, the square heel turn, I think. It's also called a Dutch heel, I believe. Right. So that's those. And you did it in orange, too. Orange. It's very Dutch. I suppose it is, yeah. 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 Um, so that's those. Do you want to do yours? Yes, please. Thank you very much. Thank you much, Lee. I want to eat those potatoes. Thank you so going. much, Lee. Look what I finished. It's my first ever test knit. And I made some boo-boos. You did. But, but, but it, you know. the issue was that... I just needed to give it some focus. 
and I didn't give it enough focus in the first instance. I'd pick it up, I'd do three or four rows, and then I would get on with some more socks. And actually having that pause in the socks has enabled me to really get into this. And mm. do you know what? The stitch pattern, once it goes in your head, it's stuck. And it was brilliant. Mm. And, you know, really, if you think last time I showed this, I was only just getting into the yeah. purple. Yeah, you were, you were. Yeah. That's two yeah. weeks ago. I mean, that's just brilliant. So it is the Messalina Cal, and um, it's going to be part of... Yeah, let me hold uh, it. And it's part of the Messalina uh, pattern update, which is coming in the next few weeks. Mm. And it, it, it's... It's slightly damp still, but... Yeah. Um, I'd, Can you I'm try not, it? Well, yeah, probably. But you bind off... I said to him you need to bind off loosely, so I told him which bind off to do, so and I was want. like, do it loosely, and he actually did it a bit too loose, but, you know... Um, hey ho! Yay! Mm. Does it feel okay? In what in what way? It's not itchy. No, not itchy. It's brilliant, Susan Claudino handspun. Mm. Just the most lovely. Look at me rocking the handspun, Susan. I'm just trying to arrange it. It's got a bit twisted at the back. There we go. It's perfect little single. Well, that's what I thought with your like your green coat that you sometimes yeah, wear yeah, yeah, and yeah. all those things. You know, if you just need something light to shove around your neck and keep mm, you warm, that's lovely. It's just perfect. And the size is great actually because I was worried it looked a bit narrow, but I think that was partly your gauge and partly because this yarn is a bit lighter than a worsted. Yeah. Or a D, you know, a DK because the pattern will be written for a DK or worsted. Worsted works as well because the DK I'm using is quite a heavy DK. Some of the, the the thickness actually was the thinnest yarn I've ever knit with. Yeah, because handspun does tend to be a bit like that, doesn't it? And that's the beauty of handspun, isn't it? But it blocked beautifully, Susan. It blocked beautifully. You know, it came to, came out to a really nice size. I love it. Yeah. What else well is off your knees? And actually, just looking at that, that's like perfect for Hadrian's Wall mm. because you've got the purple of the emperor, mm. Mm. and you've got. The, the brown of the, the wall and the shrubs and all of that. You've got mm. the green, you've got the sky. It's very... Um, it's very apt. Yeah, very... The grass. Naturey looking, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, love it. Well, this is actually two things finished together, but they go together. I finished lovely Otto, Otto Scandinavian, and I'm calling him Otto. It was the Sven Scandinavian pattern. He's finished. The only thing I haven't done is put a tassel onto his hat because they made a tassel and it just looked wrong. So I might do a little pom-pom instead. But I also finished his blanket. So here's his little blanket. I say little, but it's quite a nice size actually. And I washed, this is the Jameson and Smith's two-ply jumper weight again. And this has been soaked and I gave it a really good soak with some nice wool wash. I used the Shetland wool wash actually, uh, which came from the Shetland Islands from lovely Jeanette and it was beautiful. I loved it, Jeanette. And it's much drapier. You can see now it's, you know, it's very drapey. It is still rustic, I'll be honest, but I mean, yeah. It is still rustic, but it doesn't that's, matter. It's it doesn't matter. Toy. It's perfect for what it is and this will last forever. You know, it will just last forever. And she'll use it for her other toys as well. So what I did was I knit a strip of mitered squares and then I picked up stitches along all of them apart from the two edge stitches. So yes, that's the right way. Knit a garter stitch piece and as I was knitting the garter stitch piece, I was adding on mitered squares onto the edges. And I did that until I reached a square. I decided to do it a square because the colours all were right, you know, in that sort of order. And then I knit another one, another row of mitre squares along the bottom. So that's his little blanket. And, oh, here he is. Ooh, let me just That beard looks good. Yeah, I had awful trouble with the beard. Diane, I know you've knit a couple. I had terrible trouble with the beard because it tells you to attach the beard using the technique that you attach fringe onto a scarf. And I did that, but I didn't like... The little knots that appear. So what I did, here he is. Oh, hello. Oh. <laughs> oh no, his head's a little bit floppy. He dropped off. So what I did was, I did attach the longer pieces using that method and then I gave him like this top sort of moustache and all I did for the moustache was I just thread yarn through and let it hang. Because, I mean, it's not going to get huge amounts of 
play in terms of being thrown around and things like that. You know, Brian. Get any of that. No, I mean, Brian is almost twelve now, and she's always looked after her her toys anyway. You know, she's never been rough on them. But he will probably just sit somewhere, you know, in his ro- in her room. But isn't he adorable? Look at him. I like his jumper. Look at his jumper. Yeah, well, you can't even see the fair aisle because his beard covers it. You can see it at the back. Look, I say fair aisle in the loosest sense because I did it wrong. But, you know. And that's his hat look. And there should be a tassel on the end there, but it went wrong. So I might just make a little pom-pom. Yeah, that'd be better. Yeah. Definitely. To go on the end. And he is, his head is a little bit top heavy. I didn't stuff him very much at all. You can see how flat he is. Because... He's an old man. Right. And the idea is that, um, you know, he looks like an old man. Yeah. You know, and he's he's like this sort of gone through life and a bit worn out and, you know. That's why he keeps dropping off. That's why he keeps dropping off, yeah. All the nail banding. Yeah. (laughs) I think I'm probably pronouncing nail banding. Oh, I'm sorry. Someone has helped me with the pronunciation of that and I'm sorry. So, yeah, he's all Jameson and Smith, two-ply jumper weight. He's perfect, actually, for that. And yeah, he's all done and he's lovely, so he can be put away now. He's beautiful. Yeah, he's really cute, isn't he? I love, I mean, look, his head just does that. And like I said, I don't, I really didn't put that much stuff in it. I think it's the weight of the hat is pulling it down a little bit. But right. he's fine when he's sat, you know, if I do that, look, he's okay. So he will go away now. Cool. For Christmas and he's all done and beautiful and very pleased to get him finished. Lovely. And he will be loved. My final finished object yes. is actually some yarn that I just dyed because it's a finished object. Well, that's true. I've been working on this new colourway this week and I've had a few tries and then I think I'm finally happy. I was aiming for a very mellow, subdued colour with lots of layers well done. of colour. And I'm really pleased with how it came out. So this is the colourway. It's, it's washing out a bit. I did take a picture this morning outside in natural light, which shows the colours much better. The method I used for this is you're layering lots of different colours one at a time. It's quite time consuming and there's always a risk that it's going to turn muddy because you're using lots of different colour. So it's being, it's judging how you know, the strength of the dye of each layer so that it doesn't turn into, you know, something that looks muddy. And I think I've, I've got it, you know, about right. I was really, really pleased with it. So I'm going to do some more of these and it'll be in the next shop update. So it hasn't got a name yet. This is it. Oh. Yes. Welcome to the Bakery Bears bucket list. Gosh, where have we done that yet? Over the next, oh, it'll be about five, yeah. Over the next five episodes, we will be bringing two proposals, one from each of us, each episode, and we will have the opportunity, after the proposal, to either veto... It's a funny word. ...or vote. So if we vote, it goes onto the bucket list. If we veto, it's gone, baby. And I think what we should do is, Mm. we should both present our proposals, and then you know, after we've presented, we've got the opportunity to ask each other questions. And then after we've heard both. Right. That's then when we okay. will vote or veto. Yes. Yeah? Yes. So, I mean, I suppose, if, as long as you're happy to, it should be ladies first. Oh, no, you go first. Okay, then. So this is it. I've I no idea what it's going to say. Well, that's the other thing. We're, we're not allowed to tell each no. other. No. And I think what's important is that we set out clear ground rules. Rules? Rules. I do not want you to vote if you do not want to do it. Excellent. So there must be no voting because oh, he really wants to do that. Okay. So, okay. Okay. So this is yeah. this is serious now because I wouldn't want to do it if you voted for it and you I were didn't doing really it. want yeah. to do it. Not interested I get in that. that. Okay. If we're going to do a bucket list, we've got to do it right. Yes. So no hard feelings at all for, for, from from me. So this story starts in 1950. Good lord. In 1950, a television program started. I think it was on the BBC. Oh, I'm not sure, it might have been on Yorkshire. And this was a programme that would run for the next 48 years. Now, I didn't engage with this programme. Do you know where I'm going with this yet, Kate? No. <laughs> Which I love even more. So that takes it to 1998. Correct. So correct. it finished in 1998. Yes. 
Hmm. Now, I didn't engage with this program. Um, probably. Well, you weren't born. No, no, no. I didn't engage with this program. I actually remember the there's, there's two two of the presenters. I remember vividly, and they were uh, Terry Wogan, and I also remember Angela Rippon. Um, and I remember more actually Angela Rippon. That was in the hot zone for me. That's when I was watching it, and I was watching it all the time. And initially, I'll be honest with you, I was fibbing when I said I wanted to watch it to my mum. And I've mentioned this before. <gasps> Right, I know what you, I know what he's going to say. And I've mentioned this before. Um, I used to fib to say I wanted to watch it so I could stay up late. But something happened. I started watching it and I started to fall in love with two things. And it's something that stayed with me for the rest of my life. The first thing that I fell in love with was big band music. And the second thing that I fell in love with was ballroom dancing. Now, in 2004, of course, Strictly Come Dancing burst onto the television. It's across the world now. In America, it's Dancing with the Stars. There's, there's other things I know in the world as well. And f about the first four seasons, we loved it. Mm -hmm. When it was, a, it was focused solely on the dancing, wasn't it? Celebrities did two dances, and it, the focus was not on journeys. It was more on dancing, you know, how good were they? The best got through, the worst didn't. Although I do remember in the first season, that terrible guy from... Moon, oh, I can't remember his name, but if you remember, the final was Natasha Kaplinsky yes. against a useless fella from EastEnders who could barely dance. He was awful. Oh, Chris, yeah. Chris what's yeah. his name? Yeah, he was He was um, Shane Ritchie's brother oh, in the yeah, series, yeah. Somebody Moon. I mean, so average that they got him out of EastEnders fairly quickly as well. Yeah. So, you know, there has always been that, that sort of need, I think, for the public to vote for. And to be honest, I was always more... I was more... <laughs> I'd, I'd have more respect for the programme if it was just the judges mm. that were saying who goes through and who doesn't go through. Yeah. and Because the public vote... It just blows it every time. You know, let's Neil, not talk about who they voted out. Oh, well... The Reverend. The yeah, Reverend I know. should not have gone. The I Reverend know. was brilliant. Okay, he wasn't the best dancer, but he tried really hard. He was incredibly entertaining. He yeah. was funny. Yeah. He, I was smiling the whole time he was dancing, and that's surely what it's about. And you know, people don't vote for him. No, I was very fortunate. Anyway. I was very fortunate in that I, I grew up. My mum was a choreographer, so there were times. I remember there were times when they'd be putting on shows, and they would use me. I was only really young, but I'd be sort of used as the foil for some dancer as they were given a routine to learn. So I learned basic hold. I learned how to do. I learned how to do waltzing a little bit and, and one or two other things, um, foxtrot to a certain extent. But that was when I was very young and then I just didn't, I've, not, I've never done it, never done it. But then when, you know, we would sit and watch it and love it and you really love it. Mm. I mean, you love the dancing even mm. now. Mm. And I've, all, I've always had this dream in my head. I've always dreamt of doing a waltz to a take that song. Right. And it's, uh, I mean, the title of it is not very nice. It's like I Never Loved You At All. Oh, I know the one. But it's a lovely yeah, waltz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a lovely... I love the song, yeah. So, oh, damn. That makes it even worse for you then. So my first proposal for the Bakery Bears bucket list is, and I found someone who could teach us. Oh, no. So I know that we can get private lessons. So no one ever needs to see this. Because I wouldn't be doing this for... To, to be seen. I'm not on about, you know, learning to ballroom dance and then going and doing competitions and stuff. We need never even show this to anybody. So my first proposal is that we get ballroom dancing lessons and we learn to do something that's achievable. So it might be whilst in there, it might be something else, you know, if, if you got drawn to something else. It's time for your proposal. See, I'm still thinking about that now. <laughs> about what I'm going to say. Okay, mine. Well, you don't need to say anything. You just do this. Right. Mine, gosh, it's a bit more of a grand scale. I love it. Than yours. I love it. I've kind of partly done a tiny bit of this already. And all that did was just make me want to do this thing even more. And you don't know what I'm talking about so far. Well, I don't know. No. Um, I'm slightly concerned I might have an idea. I've, oh gosh, I don't know why you'd be concerned. Anyway. Oh, well, I clearly don't. <laughs> it stems from my, 
Well, it stems from lots of things, but mainly from my love of a particular film. And I've watched this film for decades. And Bryony now loves this film, and we watch it fairly often. I think I, know, I, think I had it down in your right, first few okay. sentences. Okay. And I want to... I've always, always wanted to kind of recreate what they do in this film. Can, can I write this down? Because write it down. Because you have a pen. Because people aren't going to believe me when I say I've got this down. Right, okay. So you, you're not allowed to look. Right. You have to look away. Do you want me to start, carry on talking? Or? Uh, no, because that'll give it away more, won't it? You see, I've been eating those potatoes, but they've probably gone a bit cold now. Which is a bit Okay, sad. go. So yeah, so we watch this film quite often. And I've always in my head, always, always wanted to do what they do in this film. And I want to travel on the same kind of thing that they travel on. And I want to stay in the same hotel that the characters stay in. And it's, it's all possible. I've even, you know, I did even Google and search whether you could actually travel on this type of vehicle. And they do still have them and the hotel is still there and it's still open. The problematic thing is that it's now in an area that's quite dangerous. It hasn't been historically, it goes up and down. I think the danger level goes up and down. Y yeah, and although it's been fairly dangerous for yeah, quite a few years. It has it? been fairly dangerous for quite a few years, so it's always been something that I'm thinking, I'm just never gonna do it, I'm never gonna do that. But I really want to. And what I want to do is, go on there. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's got it. I don't know if you can read. You probably can't read his writing. But I want to recreate... I guess that after the, she said one sentence. I want to recreate what the, the journey that they take in the film Death on the Nile. The, the one with Peter Ustinov in particular is the one that I'm referring to because that's the one that me and Bryony watch and it, it's the only one in my opinion. Peter Ustinov is the... Is the best Poirot and I know that's very controversial because a lot of people like But we will hold our judgement until we have seen Kenneth Branagh. This is true. There's a new one coming out because very, very soon. Because whilst we were sceptical, we're now not so sceptical. No. We, we have a feeling he might mm, just he might be, be quite right. good. He might be alright. Um, so that's what I want to do. And you can actually go on a cruise on these old fashioned... The one that they went on was like a wooden paddle steamer. And you can still go on cruises on these old traditional boats, you know, where it's all wood and everything and very glamorous and beautiful. And the hotel that they stay in in the film is called the Old Cataract Hotel and that's still there. So I want to do a cruise down the Nile and I want to stay at that hotel. And obviously you, they also, it started off where they were at the pyramids and the Sphinx. So you'd have to start in Cairo and you'd have to have a couple of nights in Cairo to do the pyramids. And then you'd probably have to travel to, I think they all, they all tend to start at Aswan. And I think that's where the old cataract is, the hotel actually. So it'd have to be, you know, you'd have to work out all the, the actual arrangements for it. But that's what I would love to do. I would love to do that. I've wanted to do that. Every time I watch the film, me and Bryony go, oh gosh, I'd love to do that. And visit all the, obviously, visit all the historical sites. And I have done a cruise on the Nile. So have I. And so have you. Many, many years ago, in, you know, we didn't know each other at the time. And I, you know, I really didn't appreciate it, really, I don't think, at the time. I enjoyed it. But I didn't have the kind of love of Egypt that I've got now. No. So I would love to do it with the mindset that I have now. And with you. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And, and Brian. Can you imagine? You know, I mean... Brian, Can you imagine Brian cruising down the Nile to... with me? With a bucket list. I feel like it... You told me I could put anything on there. You can. You can. Just like I have. Yeah. But the fear is, with that one, is will the world ever be... Well, I know. And this is why I'm denied about it. But, but perhaps that's not a reason to not... No. I mean, the fact that you proposed it, you want it on. And I get that. And, you know, I suppose it could go on with the caveat of, you know, we will do it when we feel safe enough. Oh, of to, course. To yeah. It. I mean, if it goes on the list, it might be in 10 years time, 20 yeah. years time if we're yeah. still here. Yeah. Um, you know. Because, that, that, I mean, obviously, that's the only thing 
which bothers me. I mean, I, I would love, I'd love to go back to Egypt. Do you have any questions yeah. for me? No. You just, <laughs> you just want to vote. Okay. Shall I go first? Okay. So I'm voting for, for Kay's one. So is cruising down the Nile, visiting the pyramids, and staying at the old Cataract Hotel going on the list? There doesn't have to be a murder. No. No. Or <laughs> the funny thing several is, murders. If we went right now, it's likely there would be. Yeah. Um, I'm torn. How could I not? I mean, how could I not? You know, you talk about playing into the things which I love as well. And, you know, the only reason why... You know, who's who's to say, hey, it's Kay's famous Fonzie impression. No, I said yippee. All oh, right, oh, sorry. There's no reason why, you know, the world isn't going to change. Because I went after that one where they all got shot outside. I mean, that's horrific. I went the year before. And I went the year after I that. Know. So it goes on with the caveat of it must be when we feel safe to do so. Yeah. Do you just want to vote? You don't want to say anything? Oh, this is horrible. Why is it horrible? It's horrible because it's just horrible. Why? Because it just is. Why? You should go with how you feel. It's like I said to you before, it's really important that whatever goes on the list is something that we both want to do. Right, okay, then I've got to go with my gut. And, you know, to be fair, I've got um, opportunities anyway, because... Have you got another woman? Well, yes, and she lives with us. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, she's taller than me. There are other ladies in my life, within our extended family... True. ...who could fill that, that need. Okay. Go for it, then. Oh! I feel like... Jed Bartlett vetoing that thing he vetoed the other night. Oh, right, okay. Right. Oh. You, need to, you need to do what you feel happy with. Okay, okay. Oh. Will I be lucky next time? So it's 1 0 to K. So, on to the really Bakery bad. Bears bucket list. Well, you shouldn't feel bad, it's fine. Onto the Bakery Bear bucket list goes what are we going to call it? Quaro Cruise. Quaro Cruise. On it goes. Yes, so we have one. We've proposed two things. One has been successful, the other has not been successful. Everybody's shouting at me saying, why wouldn't you do that? There's no point doing this if we're just going to go, yep, yeah, no, yep, that's yep, true. for that's everything. True. That's just utterly pointless. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't have been mad if you'd have said no, so. No, no, I know you wouldn't, so it's fine. Okay. So that is the end of the first Baker Bears bucket list, and we have one item on the list already. And do you know what? If I could go tomorrow, I would go tomorrow. Yes, yeah, so I would, would I, go yeah. tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. You know? So would I. It's so sad. I think it's so sad that these places are so, you know, they're... I mean, you're picking up on... It's like Bethlehem and Jerusalem yeah. and all places like this. That they're, they're places I would love to go. Well, religion has messed them up, unfortunately. It really has. And you know, it's people just so over sad them. that these places should be... Cherished. Yes. Yes. And they should be beautiful, calm places. And they're they the complete be. opposite, they aren't they? Beautiful, yeah. They could be beautiful, calm places. They are not. beautiful places. They're they just are. not calm. And, you know, it's interesting that, that Kay picks Egypt because, of course, you know, as we established last time and, and as I put in my article, you need, there's a good chance that knitting started mm, in Egypt, mm. of course, with, with the, the Nile Banding link. Anyway. Anyway. That is, that pronouncing that so wrong and I'm so sorry, I'm going to nail it for next time. It's time for the Endy Bits. Endy Bits. Yay. Right. What shall I start with? Let me just grab my basket of endy bits and while she's grabbing her basket of endy bits i will remind you of the wonderful toy along that we're doing at the moment yes we've already mentioned it a couple of times there's loads of finished entries that's already. cool that's cool and there's loads of time to get loads yeah. of finished entries in and i love knit alongs where you can double dip you can double dip and if you can, you treble, can triple dip, dip then it's treble the fun triple or treble who Tri cares okay treble they're getting choirs aren't they it's that's triple. what that's what triple boy dip. Treble dip, is, that'll do as well. Treble dip. That's three. Okay. Sounds fun. Yeah. Go on. Um, I'm going to start another giveaway. I'm going to open a giveaway thread in the Ravelry group. Um, we've had a pattern donated to us from lovely Jen Sheelan. 
she's just brought out, I think it's a very recent one, I'm sure it is. It's called the Enchanted Forest Pool Shawl and she very kindly gifted it to me and also gave us a copy for the podcast. So I'm going to open up a thread on Ravelry and it will say, I'll use the title of the, the shawl, so Enchanted Forest Pool Shawl Giveaway Thread, something like that. So go over there. Where? And Ravelry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Go over to Ravelry if you want to enter to win that pattern. Why do What is the square root of 4,682? <laughs> Gosh, don't talk about maths homework. Oh. Don't even go there with maths homework at the minute. Brian asked me a question on a maths homework the other day, and I just said, I have not got a clue. I don't even know where to go to look that up. We've had so much... You know, she's had so much homework. All we will I say, talk all day about. All this. we will say is that there is a a, a huge disparity yes. in the amount of maths homework against all the other homeworks. Yes. We have no issues in Bryony having two hours of homework. No. But an hour and fifteen of that shouldn't be maths. No. And it's not that the maths is taking her longer. She gets masses. More. Of huge maths. amounts of maths. She had masses of maths and she had, um, a, 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 I think it was a one sentence question for yeah. science. Yeah. Well, I want a rounded human being, not yeah. a mathematician, yeah. please. Yeah. So we'll be taking it up. We will be taking with our it teacher up. When we, we will. see him we will. in November. So, yeah, so go over to that thread and tell me what your favourite shawl pattern is. And that'll be brilliant for me as well because I'll get loads of information. So if you want to win that, go over there, tell me your favourite shawl pattern and then I'll draw for a winner on the next podcast. Especially shawls that you found relaxing and Yes, zen. please. Yes. That would be marvellous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm killing two birds there with one stone. So thank you, Jen, for that pattern. That's really kind of you. There's also another thread open on Ravelry, a chatter thread for a knit along that we're starting with our patrons on the 1st of November. Ooh. I've opened up a chatter thread. I, did, I haven't told anybody I've opened it up. So there are a few people that have found it, but I thought I'd mention it. So all you lovely patrons, you can go over to that chatter thread and tell us what your plans are for the knit along. The knit along is called the Merry Knitmas knit along. And I think I spoke about this before, didn't I? I can't remember yeah, if that or not. I yeah. spoke about it before, but basically this is a knit along where you can use the knit along for either clearing your needles before the end of the year. So obviously whips are allowed. So for everything you finish, you can pop in a finished object in the um, FO thread. Or you can use it and or you can use it for, for knitting up your Christmas gift. So the chatter thread's there, so please go over and tell us what your plans are and then I'll open an FO thread once we get past the 1st of November. So that's there, there will be prizes as well. And then the last thing I wanted to do on with regards to admin -y sort of things, I've drawn, I know I said, I think on the last episode one before, that there was a, there's a thread on Ravelry as well for the Bits and Bobs blanket and it's just a chatter thread because this is such a long term project that it didn't really make you know sense to have a knit along because it would have had to have gone on a long time and I thought it made more sense just to have a chatter thread where people can dip in and out of, you can show us your progress, you can tell us what yarns you're using and then randomly I'll draw a prize from that chatter thread and I've done that, I've drawn a prize and the winner is going to get, I've also been um, dyeing up some speckles, I'm going to do some festive speckled yarn and this is one of them that's making me think of marshmallow and Isn't it pistachio nuts with it's, raspberries on top. It's speckles of this beautiful green and then a sort of pinky red. It's really, really pretty. This is also a technique that takes some time because I have to dye these one at a time. So, you know, individually in one pot, there's one skein of yarn. So it's quite time consuming, but that's how, that's it. The best way I've found of getting these really, can you see the really sort of delicate speckles? So this colourway is called Welcome to Christmas Morning. It makes me think of Muppet's Christmas Carol. I think that's what one of the ghosts said. Welcome to Christmas morning. So that's a, the skein of yarn I'm giving away. And the winner was number 56. And that's Giddy Crafter. Pauline, it's you. Hey. 
I know, I was thrilled, Pauline, that it was you. And she's knitting a bits and bobs and it's looking absolutely beautiful. So Pauline, that yarn is yours. It's got sparkles in as well. And I know you love knitting socks. So you might want to use that for some lovely Christmas socks. So Pauline, I've got a feeling I should have your address somewhere, but would you mind just sending me a message on Ravelry is fine or privately on Instagram, whatever you want to do. Just tell me your address, just remind me and I'll pop that in the post for you. So he goes to Christmas well present and he says that, isn't he? Yes. And then he breaks into, it's in the singing on yes. the street corner. Yes, oh, yeah. it's that. Yes, so, I remember. Um, it came out really nice. It's super pretty. So, yay, Pauline, well done. And then the last thing I've got is just a couple of purchases that I've made. And all of these actually were one purchase. I felt a bit greedy doing this, but... The reason I got this is I was knitting, do you know the Bots Beans socks that I made for Bryony recently from London House Yarns? And then that made me go and look at her website and I realised that she'd got loads of other Harry Potter inspired self-striping yarn. So I asked her if I could have a custom order, which she is fine. She, she doesn't have the capacity to do custom orders right now, which was absolutely fine. I totally understand that. But she did say that the next time she dyes them up, she would reserve me some, which was brilliant. So it kind of had to wait a few weeks, which was no problem whatsoever. And she did that. So I thought, right, you know what? I'm going to get, I'm going to get three. <laughs> so I was really greedy. So I got Christmas at Grimold Place. Mm, nice. I know it's beautiful. Look at that. I like the purple and the green together. It's beautiful. Oh, it's absolutely beautiful. And I've got, these are gonna be Bryony's Christmas socks this year, so I need to cast these on. But I wanted to show you them in the lovely skein before I cast them on. And it's on the sparkle base, and I've got the mini to match as well. This perfectly matches one of the colors that's in there. And she's seen this, and because she chose which she wanted. So we've got that one, which is beautiful. I've then got Diagon Alley. I never know quite how to say that. That was perfect. Was it? Yeah. And this again is self striping. This one's on the 8020 merino nylon. If you say diagonal, you'll, you'll end up in. Diagonally. In, where is it? What's, <laughs> what did he say? What's he called that shop that he ends up in? Oh. oh. Burks. Porkin and Burks or something? No. No. Oh, I didn't know. He was in Nocturne Alley, yeah. wasn't he? Porkin and Burks. Was it Porkin and Burks he ended up in? I think so. So this is um, Diagon Alley. And it's beautiful purples, and um, there's a black in there, and like a greeny and a blue colour is gorgeous with again a mini of grey gorgeous gorgeous and then the last one is Yule Ball which again is on the sparkle base again I've got the mini I was so greedy <laughs> lovely colours it's beautiful and this is Yule Ball oh my goodness and I love that it comes that's about with... as festive as it comes to me I it's... know and I really want to cast these on as well yeah I'd give it those first well are they for socks so, well they'll, yeah, all, they'll yeah, all be yeah. socks for Brian. your ball will be brilliant and I love that it comes with black yeah I think that'll just look fantastic it will just gorgeous colours so Steph thank you so much and she very kindly she sent me the order she sent me an extra skein I mean how lovely and it's on a 50-50 merino silk and it's called sugared violets. Look at the colour. Ah, oh, Steph, it's beautiful. And I think I'm going to use this actually for a design that Ooh. I've got in mind. Cool. It's gorgeous because this is just Bryony's colours. So I might knit a version that I give to Bryony and, you know, with this yarn, it's gorgeous. So Steph, thank you so much for those. And I was so thrilled and Bryony was just like, when, when I told her, I said, Bryony, guess what? That yarn's on its way. And she was like, oh my gosh. Is it the Grimoire place? Are you going to get it? She was like this. So I'm so thrilled. Thank you so much for doing that. Yeah. And then the last thing is I ordered, a, I got another one of these lovely bags from Jill. It's Bertie and Poppet. Yes, yes. And I saw this fabric and I just couldn't resist it. It's Christmas sloths. Look how cute. Oh, it's adorable. And she, I've got another one of these bags and I use it often. It's just a little drawstring, just a like an envelope style, but it's padded. And they're brilliant. You know, it's simple, but I think simple is, I'm really into sort of simple things. You can probably tell that at the moment. But it's beautifully made and I just love it. And I'll be using this probably for these socks, I think because my Dobby bag 
is housing the other Harry Potties. Ha, potty. <laughs> Harry Potty. <laughs> I've clearly spoken too much today. Harry Potter. So I think those are going to go in there. Lovely. Cool. Lovely. All finished. So that is the end of episode 85. Neil, <laughs> episode 86, we're going to continue. We thought we would finish our uh, New Adventures season in episode 86, but I think what we're going to do is we've just got that bucket list going and I want to get one on the list please so uh, next episode we'll be continuing with some more Baker Bears bucket list we'll have some more down the world food aisle and we'll be being rather daring even if I do say so myself uh, and the episode after that episode 87 will be the final new adventure of the year and then and then drum roll please except I don't think I've got a sound for a drum roll Episode 87 is the launch of our brand new quiz show, Nitterly Blank. So there'll be more about that coming up in the next episode, in episode 86. We'll tell you some more about that, but brand new 70s based quiz show. And yes, with knitting at its heart. And yes, there will be fancy dress in episode 87. So thank you so much for watching. Thanks everyone. And we will see you next time for more. <laughs> Shuffle!